Hi everyone, uh, I hope this finds you doing well and staying healthy. I wanted to show some enhancements to Illuminated Cloud Support for PMD Apex. And if you're, uh, if you're not familiar with PMD or PMD Apex, PMD is an open source static code analyzer engine uh, with support for a large number of languages. And a few years back, uh, an enterprising team extended uh, PMD for the Salesforce Apex programming language and added a large number of rules. And over the years uh, since then, uh, the rule set has been expanded and enhanced uh, by that team, by other contributors, and even by Salesforce themselves. And, and these rules, as you can see here, uh, look for uh, compliance with best practices, uh, look for uh, potential uh, uh, bugs, for potential uh, security issues, for inefficiencies, um, uh, for opportunities for refactoring, for better encapsulation, for better readability of your code, things like that. And it's just a wonderful tool and, uh, you know, should be really a part of any Salesforce developer's tool set. So um, Illuminated Cloud has actually had support for PMD Apex uh, pretty much since it was first released. And it uh, always operated in a batch mode. It would run the, uh, the PMD command line. Uh, effectively, you could go in and, and to the PMD Apex uh, code inspection, uh, you would have to, and you may see some slight differences here. If so, uh, you can, uh, I'll elaborate on those in just a moment, but you could basically uh, download the PMD distribution, which it will help you to do. Uh, you could uh, download the PMD rule set and customize it to your taste, which again, uh, it will help you to get the, uh, the latest version of the standard rule set. And you could just run this against your, uh, against your project uh, any, or any subset of it. And it would uh, give you effectively a report of infractions uh, within that code base against your configured rule set. So we can see all types of issues being reported here. And uh, we'll look at some examples, but we could review these just by you know, effectively going through the code. And you can see examples here if I double click, it'll open it uh, in the editor, and we can see uh, the details about the types of errors. And this is pretty much how it worked. And if you wanted, you could export that report uh, so that you could review it offline outside of the IDE, or you could uh, sit down with your team and, and come up with a plan of attack to resolve the issues, whatever it happens to be. Well, um, with the most recent enhancements, uh, I've actually integrated PMD for real-time analysis rather than batch analysis. So let's take a look. I'm gonna go into the inspections configuration and traditionally you would have seen PMD Apex showing up like lightning lint saying available for analyze inspect code as a batch code inspection. But now we can actually select it and uh, make it a real-time code inspection. And again, there are these three uh, configuration fields right here. Uh, the distribution, this used to be uh, the path to the executable script, uh, whether it was pmd.bat or whether it was run.sh. Now it's just the path to the distribution so that Illuminated Cloud can load the relevant uh, logic from PMD for in-memory real-time processing. And then of course, uh, the path to your rule set. Uh, this is probably stored as part of your project or, or somewhere else. And then the, uh, the minimum rule threshold uh, for which you want to see things reported. Uh, in, the, uh, in the rule set, you actually set a priority to each rule uh, should there be an infraction. And uh, you can basically say that you want things uh, only from a certain rule priority or higher, in this case, medium. You could set this wherever you want. Uh, this is really going to come down to how you want to tune your rule set. And as soon as we hit OK, you'll notice that things start highlighting. Uh, now, this is in addition to uh, not instead of the existing um, uh, code inspections offered by Illuminated Cloud and by the base JetBrains IDE or any other third-party uh, uh, static code analyzers, uh, ESLint, TSLint, whatever it happens to be. So now you're you're really getting all these uh, union together in terms of the information available to you in the editor. And now let's look at how we can use this information. So uh, I'm going to use uh, F2 or in, and Shift F2 to navigate through the various issues in the, in the editor. And we can see information about it. And if we want to know more about a particular rule, we can just click on the link and it will open the details. And the details will say what gets reported and why. If there are opportunities to tune that rule or configure that rule in your rule set. You see uh, information about that here. Um, and we can see in this case that it is uh, complaining about some Apex doc uh, issues. In this case, it's saying that this doesn't have an at description. Um, I, I personally, uh, and this is reflected in Illuminated Cloud, I personally prefer the SF Apex doc variant of Apex doc that doesn't require that particular uh, preface. You know, we can see that if we add that here, it automatically goes away. You can see that error went away. And then if we remove it, it comes back. It, again, showing this is a real-time integration with, uh, with PMD Apex. Um, but uh, most other uh, 
uh, analogs to Apex Doc, Java Doc, JS Doc, ES Doc, things like that don't require uh, any type of an additional tag to start your description text. Just everything before the first tag is your description text. And I, I prefer it that way. It, it seems superfluous to me to have to put at description. And so that's how Illuminated Cloud handles this by default. It's how SF Apex Doc handles it. And this is getting flagged. And unfortunately, there's no way to, um, to turn that off, turn off that behavior. Well, interestingly, uh, Illuminated Cloud actually has its own code inspection for Apex Doc validation that has uh, a large number of configuration options, including the ones that are covered by uh, the existing PMD rule. So in this case, I think we just want to turn off this rule because, for example, here's another issue saying that these methods are missing their Apex Doc comment when, in fact, they inherit an Apex Doc comment from their uh, base declaration, their, the one that they over override. And you can see that that actually gets copied down. So um, in this case, I think that uh, the Apex doc rule is, is missing something and is giving a false positive. So uh, why don't we go ahead and turn that off? We'll go to our rule set. And here's the documentation rule. I'm just going to comment it out and save it. And we'll go back over here and we can see that uh, it was removed here. Let's see why it wasn't removed here. Well, it wasn't removed here because there were more than uh, th there was more than one problem reported on this element and on the other elements below. And in this case, it's saying that there's an empty block statement. Uh, in general, I agree with empty block statements as being uh, potential red flags for issues. I mean, if you if you have an empty block statement, minimally you should be logging something about what's going on. Uh, but I think that this is a, a, a very um, common exception to that, and that is a default implementation. Uh, of an overridable method uh, in, a, in a base class. And so this being a trigger handler base class, uh, we don't want to require all concrete trigger handlers to have to implement every single combination of timing and, and DML operation, uh, nor do, is there anything logical to put in here into a default implementation. So these are going to be empty blocks by default. Um, and if we look at the documentation for this, uh, and see if there's a way to uh, basically configure as exceptions um, uh, base uh, methods in abstract base classes, overridable methods. There's not. There's only these code climate uh, control properties. So again, this is something that we can't configure away. Uh, and we don't want to disable the entire rule because I, in general, I agree that it is an indicator that something may be wrong. So this is going to show uh, the second option for managing what is effectively a signal to noise ratio tuning exercise. And let's talk about that for a second. Um, if you are getting from any static code analyzer uh, information, uh, basically reported infractions that you don't agree with or that uh, that uh, you don't agree with them in general, you don't agree with uh, a specific instance, whatever, uh, and you just ignore it. Eventually, you're going to start ignoring uh, things that you should be paying attention to, true issues, um, because it's very difficult uh, just basically by scanning code when you have a tremendous number of uh, reported infractions to know which ones uh, you don't care about and which ones you do. And that's why tuning it is going to be critical. And tuning it can be turning off rules, it can be setting thresholds or configuration properties and rules, or it can be uh, denoting exceptions to rules where you in generally believe the rule is well configured and you agree with the, the concept, the background, the foundation of the rule. But uh, in this case, for example, I think these empty blocks are exactly what they need to be. So let's add uh, them as, as exceptions, and that's called suppressing. Um, you've seen this before with other uh, code inspections. I'm going to show it's a little different with PMD because it has its own way of doing suppression. It ends up behaving the same way, and the interaction model is the same. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Alt-Enter on Windows or Linux, uh, Opt-Enter on the Mac, and it's going to show you that we have some options for this particular inspection. So I'm going to press the right arrow key, and it shows me multiple options for suppression. I can suppress at the class level, which is going to apply uh, transitively to all the content of the class. I can uh, constrain it to just this method that actually is being reported, uh, or I can suppress it with a comment. I'm going to show that in just a moment why you would want to use that. Uh, but uh, these first two are going to do it with, a, uh, with an annotation. So let's just add it for the method so that we don't end up accidentally suppressing it for more than we want. And it's going to create a suppress warnings annotation with a directive to PMD about its rule with ID empty statement block. And you can see that this is no longer being reported. Um, but the other ones are. 
So uh, we can do the same thing down here. If we wanted, we could suppress it to the class level and they all go away. But if uh, later on in our actual logic, we ended up with an empty block, we would miss that. We would have just turned that off for all contents of this class. So that may be a little overzealous. So instead, I think what we'll do is just add it for the method and we can just keep doing it. In fact, for uh, the purposes of uh, doing this as quickly as possible, I'll just uh, copy it down rather than using the, uh, the contextual menu. You can see that now we're green which really should be the goal. You should be looking for no problems found. And so we've made this one uh, clean now through a combination of configuration and, uh, and exceptions. So let's look at another class and we're gonna look at two more examples. Uh, so multi-map here it says excessive public count. And it, basically what it's saying is the public interface of this class looks uh, unwieldy, looks very big. And that can be a pretty serious code smell saying that uh, there, uh, you've potentially starting, you started using this as like a kitchen sink. You've started just adding more and more stuff to this happens a lot with utility classes and things like that. Um, and it's an opportunity for refactoring or encapsulation, whatever, uh, whatever the right solutions are. In this case though, and we'll just take a look real quick. Um, this is a collection class, a custom collection class, excuse me, for a one to many uh, map. And, um, and the interface is for the most part, the necessary interface for the behavior of this class, for the, for the features of this class. Now you'll see some inner classes and those inner classes exist um, and potentially are, are contributing to this report. Uh, they exist because of another limitation in Apex, which is the lack of a hierarchical uh, namespace or packaging capability. Uh, the only namespaces in Apex are gonna be your system namespaces and your uh, custom namespaces that come with installed packages. And uh, those aren't hierarchical in nature, they're flat, and you can't just uh, arbitrarily declare namespaces and, and place yourself in namespaces in your code without uh, it going into a, a package and being distributed in that manner. Uh, and so a pretty common idiom, a pretty common practice is to use inner classes as a, a form of, of, uh, of namespace encapsulation. That's exactly what I've done here. These may be uh, supporting classes that uh, are intended to be used externally. They're actually published, but, um, but they're always in the context of the top level class. That effectively is an enclosing concept. And so, uh, so that's the case here. And so it creates admittedly a fairly large uh, interface to this class, but it's the interface that's necessary. And so again, I, I believe that this is a good um, rule. It is probably already tuned properly, or at least I'd be afraid that changing some of these thresholds uh, could cause me to miss uh, true potential issues in uh, ever-growing utility classes and things like that. Uh, but um, but th this is not a good report on it. So again, what we want to do is suppress it. And we'll just go ahead and suppress it at the class level because it applies to this particular class recursively. And so we can see that uh, that went away, but we still have one issue. And we'll go down here and take a look at it. This will be the last one. And I think that it will help to provide uh, pretty pretty good concrete examples of each of the, the um the types of approaches you would take to uh, balancing the signal to noise ratio and, and really uh, cleaning up uh, the report that you get from static code analyzers. And so this is saying that uh, we have multiple declarations on a single line. And uh, let's, uh, let's expand on this. So if we basically said string uh, foo comma bar comma baz, here's another example of it. Again, showing the real time nature, you can see it got highlighted as I finished that statement uh, by PMD. And so again, it's just saying that you're declaring multiple variables here. It can be difficult to see what's being declared, especially if you use initializer expressions and things like that. Um, there's a couple different ways you can deal with this. And so uh, we'll, we'll go back up here. Uh, one way you can deal with it, it even says if you put them on the uh, same line, one per, one per line, just go to the rules, um, by default, strict mode equal false, uh, it won't report on that. And so that's one way we can deal with it. And because this is the initializer for a, uh, a traditional for loop, not a for each, but a for loop, uh, where you have an initializer, a condition, and, a, and an incrementer, um, then there's no ability for us to split this up into mul multiple declarations. This is the only way we can declare multiple uh, variables uh, as part of our our uh, loop logic is to do it in a comma separated uh, uh, fashion here. And this is actually a common idiom. In fact, it's, it's, it's a good practice when the, uh, the, um, the boundary condition that you're checking against in your, in your uh, loop logic, in your loop condition, uh, could be expensive to compute you, and it's not gonna change 
per loop is you, uh, per loop iteration is you're going to basically cache that once by declaring it, uh, in the, in the initializer. And so we've done exactly that. Now delegates dot size is probably not expensive, but you can imagine something that would be. So, um, so we do want that here. So one thing we could do is we could split that up across lines and that actually makes that go away, but it also is kind of ugly. And this is a common idiom. So again, I want to go ahead and just allow this. Well, one way I could do that is to suppress it for the method and it would do that. But notice that the second instance of it that we probably wanted to clean up it just it just uh stopped being highlighted which is not what we want that was a little too wide of a scope of uh of suppression so instead what we're going to do is we're going to suppress for just the the statement well you can't suppress a statement with an annotation that's not part of the apex grammar annotations can only be added to body declarations and top level type declarations so what we will do is we'll suppress the statement with a comment and it will add an end line comment this is where things are a little bit different versus uh standard suppression for uh, like say the apex, uh, code inspections, uh, those would add a, uh, a comment above. In fact, we can see that if we go down here, um, well, that's actually, we'll need to look at that in just a moment. Sorry. I got ahead of myself, uh, for an unused, but, uh, but this added an end of line comment says no PMD. Notice that that turned that off and it left us here, uh, with the ability to see another problem we need to solve. And again, we could move these like that, and that would actually turn that off, or we could uh, do three different declarations, split them to three different declarations. And now we're dealing with illuminated clouds. This is what I was going to do just a moment ago, saying variable foo is never used. And uh, if we wanted to suppress that with a comment to show you the difference, uh, this is uh, the format used by JetBrains IDEs, and it's what will happen for native code inspections. And this is the format used for expected by uh, PMD. So a slight difference there, but illuminated cloud encapsulates it. You're going to do the exact same thing, and it will add the appropriate type of comment based upon the type of inspection. Um, if we didn't have this, then the we could just say we wanted to remove these. And as soon as we remove them, we're now in a green state, except for a uh, typo, a misspelling. Somewhere in here, there's something that's missed with multi-map. It doesn't know about multi-map. So at this point, I could deal with that by uh, saving that to my dictionary, and now we are completely green. Okay, so what did we just see? We just saw that uh, Illuminated Cloud can now be uh, configured to use Apex Doc. Uh, I'm sorry, configured to use PMD Apex as a real-time static code analyzer in conjunction with all of its existing static code analysis capabilities. That includes uh, its first-class code inspections. It includes the JetBrains first-class code inspections for the other supported languages like JavaScript and TypeScript, uh, CSS, HTML, uh, you know, what have you, and, uh, and other uh, uh, integrated third-party static code analyzers like, um, like, uh, like Lightning Lint, if you're, if you're using it, like ESLint, TSLint, whatever, whatever else uh, you're using. And uh, all, of that, uh, all, of, all of that information can be brought to bear to fundamentally uh, increase the quality of your code, uh, reduce the chances of, 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 uh, of bugs, of, of uh, inefficiencies, of security issues, things like that. So, uh, so it gives you a lot of information. It's going to be important with any of those static code analyzers to achieve the proper signal to noise ratio. And fundamentally, in the end, you should get to a point where if anything's reported, uh, it's actionable. Uh, you're not just going to ignore it. You're either going to fix it because it's a legitimate issue or you're going to uh, decide that uh, the rule itself is not providing useful information and either disable it or configure it. And again, that's not just PMD Apex. Uh, these annotations as you or these inspections, as you can see, have their own configuration. Uh, several of them do. And if we go to the unused declaration, it has its own configuration. Uh, PMD Apex has its own configuration in terms of threshold. These things have their own configuration the same way that this file has its own configuration. You're going to configure it uh, by disabling or by configuring. Uh, and then the remaining ones uh, that you're not going to fix, you're going to, and you decide that they are what they are, that they're, they're, they're intentional, that they're known exceptions, you're going to suppress them. And in the end, you're hopefully going to end up with really nice check mark up here, green check mark up here for all of your source files. Um, okay, so uh, I'll just go into the standard epilogue for my videos. Um, if you find any issues with this, um, certainly let me know about them. I will take care of them. If you have any thoughts on how to improve it, uh, let me know. I'm always interested to get that type of feedback. And, uh, and last but not least, uh, thank you for your time. And I hope everyone uh, stays safe and stays healthy. Bye.